Steve Dotto here. Today we're going to talk about what I consider to be one of the most useful tools on the planet. It's called Dropbox. It's a cloud-based file storage system that's really dominating the space. Everybody's taking their shots at Dropbox these days. And there's lots of good competitors. SugarSync is another app which we will look at in a later video, which I really like. Apple with their iCloud took dead aim at Dropbox and to a certain extent, so is Google with their new Google Drive. But Dropbox is still the king. And why is it the king? Well, it's a good question because it's kind of expensive if you use it, uh, if you pay for the, for the upgraded version. But it does so much and it does it so elegantly. I guess that's really the key to Dropbox is how elegant it is. If you want to use Dropbox or if you want to try it out, you can try it out for free. You get two gigabytes of storage space for free. And I encourage you to do that because Dropbox really does set the standard for this sort of app. You can go to their website at dropbox.com and there they've got this get started area. You'll go through and you'll and it tells you basically all the different steps that you do as far as taking the tour, which you can walk through, although this video will certainly suffice, uh, installing it on your computer and then starting to load all of your files in and it gives you little check marks all the way through. Maybe the easiest way for me to show Dropbox is to just show Dropbox. When I install it on my computer, now I've installed it here on my Mac, identical in other platforms, up here in the menu bar is the Dropbox folder and it acts just within my file system. If I open Dropbox on my computer, it opens my normal file system, in this case here on the Mac, and here is the Dropbox as a folder and you can see all of the different files and documents that I have stored within my Dropbox folder. As well, let me just return to that menu for a moment. It also tells you all the time just how much of your space you've used. When you first open your account, you'll have two gigabytes of space here. And so you'll have, you have that much storage that is available to you. I've upgraded to a pro account, so I have 50 plus gigabytes. Now, the reason that you'll have a varying number, not a nice round number, is as you, uh, uh, as you do different activities, such as liking them on Facebook or getting your friends to sign up, you get bonus extra amounts of storage. So everybody has a slightly different amount of storage depending on how active they've been in the whole Dropbox community and how much Dropbox likes you by you recommending their product to other people. Let's return to my Dropbox folder here and see here's all of the files that I have stored within my Dropbox folder. Now, the main reason that I use my Dropbox folder is these are files that I probably want to share with others or share with other devices. I want access to these files when I'm on my various devices. Actually, a good way for me to show you that is by returning to the web. Now, I'm going to my web browser here, and this is my Dropbox account as it appears on the internet. So I could be logging onto this from some remote computer anywhere or from my home computer as I'm doing now. But what I wanted to show you here is I'm going to go into my settings on the web, and this is my basic application settings for Dropbox. And here I'm going to go into my computers. Well, oh, actually, before I do that, take a look. You can see how much free space I have on my Dropbox. And then this is my purchase space on my Dropbox. When I go into my computers, it shows all of the different devices that I have hooked up to my Dropbox account or that I've logged in with. I have my Mac, my notebooks, my iPhone, my Android device, and my iPad all connected so that I can access all of these files, all the files that are important to me here in my Dropbox folder, I can access them easily from any of those devices. And that's the magic of Dropbox, is the fact that I can access the important documents from anywhere. I'll give you an example of how that might work. I am taking some university courses towards my master's. So I am bound and determined not to print pages, paper, if I can avoid it. So I'm using my iPad as my reader and main, my note taker as I do all of my different, uh, as I do all of my different coursework. And here I've got my different assignments and my reading lists here in Dropbox. Well, when I jump onto my iPad, I have downloaded and installed Dropbox on my iPad from the iTunes store. It's free to download. It accesses your account. And if we then open it up and take a look within the Dropbox folder here, we can see in the menu here, I have access to all of the exact same files that are on my computer. This is the easiest way to get documents and to gain access to a file system within the iPad or the iPhone world. So here, I've got a document that I'm supposed to be reading. It's a, it's a PDF document, which I downloaded from the internet. Uh, then I uploaded it or I saved it into my Dropbox folder. Now I'm accessing it through my iPad. So I can now do my reading on my iPad. But not just reading, I can actually do all my markup and annotation as well. So instead of just using a PDF reader, which is just what's opened here, 
I'm going to use my app called Notability. This was a whole 99 cents. I downloaded this app, I installed it, and it is a PDF annotation program. There are several like it on, available online, and it is a really neat tool. See what it does here is it allows me to choose the different tools along the top, and I can mark up my document should I choose to. I can highlight important passages and text. I can even add voice annotation to it, and I can also type within the document. Then once I'm finished marking up my document, I can then save it back into Dropbox as a PDF with the annotation encapsulated within the document so that when I'm ready to write my papers, I just open my marked up documents in one window on my computer, I have my word processor in another, and I do my writing. It's just like having your paper notes beside you on the page, except they're now in digital form on the computer. It's a very nice way of using the technology, I think, a bit of a peek at the future. There is one other area that I have to show you how we should be using Dropbox, and this I also find tremendously useful. That is sharing of large files. When we have, when we take photos, make videos, do audio files, sharing those files, sending them by email to people that we want to share them with can be a bit of a challenge because large files, of course, are not handled well in email. There's various FTP or file transfer protocol services that will do it, but none easier than Dropbox. Let me show you how I use Dropbox for that. When you create your Dropbox account, you're automatically given a folder called a public folder. This is the folder that's designed for you to easily share files with other people. Now you can set up any of your other files or folders to share. You can set sharing preferences, which I've done for different projects that I'm working on. But for the most part, the easiest way to share files is just by loading the file or dropping it into your Dropbox public folder. And you can see here I've got a series of different, mainly large video and audio files that I need to share with different people. And here are, actually these are some, uh, some uh, audio files from a concert that my daughter was singing in that her singing teacher wants to have access to. I am going to copy those by saying here in the Dropbox menu by right clicking on the folder on the file itself, I say copy public link. Once I've done that, I can then take my email software, I can address it to the person that I want to share the file with, I paste the link in and then the person at the other end just has to click on that link and that will start the file transfer to their computer. So here we are going to move about a 60 megabyte file, which is a fairly large file, to, too large to send by email easily. We're going to send that through to the teacher uh, through Dropbox. It's great for doing that sort of file sharing. Now, as I mentioned, it is also able, or we also have the ability to be able to take any of our other folders and set up sharing preferences with individuals, which is great when you're doing project work and that sort of stuff. Dropbox is one of those tools that the more I use it, the more I find use for it. Beyond the sharing of files, the accessing them from multiple systems is also the backup side of, of Dropbox, where I've got my most important files backed up onto Dropbox as a redundancy. I still use my Time Machine and other backup services, but I also use Dropbox to make sure that I've got another backup that's ready to go should I ever need it. And finally, Dropbox is continuously adding some extra features to their product. For example, now every time that I come in, come home with my phone uh, or my iPad and I've taken pictures on either of the devices, it automatically uploads the photos into the camera upload folder that I have here on Dropbox, giving me yet another backup and another way of sharing and managing my different documents. Overall, Dropbox has become an essential tool in, 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 in my workflow in how I manage all of my data. As I said at the top, it is a little bit expensive. I think at $10 a month, it is one of the more expensive Web 2.0 services that I subscribe to. But for me, I found value. You may or may not find the same value, but the nice thing is you can start it with two megabytes and improve that, improve that amount of storage a little bit. And you can do an awful lot with two megabytes if you don't use it as a backup, but you just delete files as you share them and as you use them, and you just have your most immediate files there. I hope this video has been useful to you. If so, please click on the uh, subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up in the like area. If you want to see more of our videos, drop by dottotech.com. We have a whole whack of videos that we think you will find useful. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for visiting me today.